for Minister Jeffrey Golden. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation for all those that believe. Ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for is God's power for salvation. And it's to everyone, to everyone that believes. And it's to everyone, to everyone that receives. For we have everlasting life.
one more hand praise as you take your seat. Cover me with your spirit. Cover me with your spirit. Cover me with your spirit. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me with your spirit. Cover me with your spirit. Cover me with your spirit. Cover me. Cover me. Cover me. We honor God tonight who is our life. And I know this is the practice that we have been asked to follow in the Holy Convocation to cut time. And they told us that once the house has been addressed, they address it for all of us. And I'm going to follow protocol tonight like I'm in the Holy Convocation. But I do believe that any time you're given an opportunity to stand here, you, you must say something about the chief apostle, the leader of this great church. We honor Bishop Blake, our leader, and to all of the leadership of this great church. Thank God for each one of you in your offices. I want to thank God for the young man that introduced me. My wife and I, we call him Chairman Son. Whenever we see him and we call each other, he's Chairman Son. Because the four years that I walked in this youth department, this distinguished gentleman, gentleman walked right by my side and he's like a son to me and I do honor Chairman Linwood Dillard tonight <laughs> Lady Mae Blake is in the house and I'm so humbled I, I'm, I'm humbled and honored Mother Willie Mae Rivers our general supervisor I thank God amen my supervisor sitting on the front row and we love her and I have some family here Great Lakes first are you in the house and Kingdom International where are you all right I thank God tonight I'm I'm 63 years old and 43 of the 63 years, counting two years that we went to Saints Junior College together. June 17th, 
a few weeks ago the Lord allowed me to celebrate 41 years of marriage so counting the two years at Saints Junior College and the 41 years of marriage 43 of my 63 years this one woman has been in my life she also serves as the president of the pastor's wives of the Church of God in Christ and I say this and I hope nobody gets upset with me but people really don't understand why I have sunshine on a cloudy day and when it's cold outside I've got the month of May and it's all because of my girl Lady Pearl will you stand my wife love you dear in the book of first Peter chapter 5 and I'm only going to read one verse I kept asking chairman Dillard every time he said I was preaching I said are you sure you want me but here I am be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want to use for a subject right quick, trying to catch me riding dirty. Now I want to say right quick to you, this is not going to be a message where you will have to bother your neighbor a whole lot. And because I want each individual in here tonight to examine yourself. I live in Michigan and we had a very rough winter. And once I could see that winter had passed and it looked like the snow, the salt, the ice was gone. I decided to take my vehicle to a car wash that I frequently use and I went there and I asked them to wash it and detail it and clean it out for me. They told me that it would be anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes and so I went in the waiting room checking emails and just finding some way to kill time and they had a video station on and music was playing and really didn't pay a lot of attention but there was one song that came on that woke my spirit up I really couldn't understand the words but I typed in my phone the vamp of the song and the vamp said, they trying to catch me riding dirty. I, my oldest grandson who was here sitting out lives with me. And so I went home and I said, PJ, I heard a song at the car wash. I need you to Google it or pull it up. And he Googled it and the words came up and I can't go over the words in here tonight some of the words are not appropriate but the the storyline of the song is this young man named Shah Millionaire and you need to know that he's not the first one to even put that song out that song was put out in 1996 by a group called the Underground Kings but Shah Millionaire brought it and updated it and upgraded it and he sang that I've got a brand new ride and I've got and I'm gonna say my young lady that's not the word he used for her but she's in there with me and we're rolling 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 but one thing he said the popo -po, police are watching me 
because they're hoping to catch me riding dirty. For those of you that may not know that street vernacular, riding dirty means that they're hoping to catch him with drugs, drug contraband, drug paraphernalia, or even an illegal weapon. They are trying to catch him with suspended license or anything illegal so they could arrest him and jail him and put him in bondage. As I studied that song, my mind went to this passage of scripture in the Holy Writ where Peter writes, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. The apostle Peter was truly a one-of-a-kind preacher. And yes, Peter was different. And yet Jesus saw something in him. He was one of the three disciples chosen by the Lord on different occasions to witness the miraculous. He was the one disciple who had enough faith to get out of the boat in the storm and walk to Jesus. And it was this same Peter when Jesus spoke of his death. Peter said, I will never forsake you. So if anybody could talk about the devil, he could. So what he does, he writes to the church and he says, be sober. He gives us a serious warning that we need to pay close attention to, especially in this hour. He said, be careful, be sane, and be sensible in our spiritual walk. First of all, you must know we have an enemy. Can I talk just tonight? I just want to talk. The person sitting next to you is not your enemy. The person sitting next to you is not your adversary. They might be your irritant. But they're not your adversary. And so we need to know that we have a real enemy. And he stalks us day and night. Trying to catch us. Riding dirty. I have been given this assignment tonight. To warn you that your enemy is here in Tampa. He came to the AIM convention so he could catch somebody, y'all help me preach, riding dirty. And what really caught my attention is that the animal Peter used to describe the devil. He said he's like a roaring lion and that really got my attention because if you know anything about me or been around me a length of time if I'm not watching a playoff game or some sports I'm watching Animal Planet and I get messages from watching Animal Planet and National Geographic and it was amazing that he said the lion because if you really know this the lion is not the biggest cat in the cat family the biggest cat in the cat family is the Siberian tiger but they live in different parts of the world. The lion is not even the fastest cat. Because the fastest the lion can get up to is a speed of 30 miles per hour. But there is another cat called the cheetah. That can run and get to speeds of 70 miles an hour. The lion is not even as stealth as the leopard. Because the leopard can take twice its body weight and climb a tree. And eat its prey so that the hyenas and other prey animals don't steal it. But Peter said, the lion. Why the lion? He's the king of the beasts. When the lion roars, his roar can be heard five miles away. And so Peter says, the devil is like the lion. Watch the lioness blend in with the high grass. Her golden coat gets in the middle of the high grass and she can't be detected. Notice I said, she. That's another message I don't have time because male lions don't hunt. The only time a male lion gets in a hunt is when the lioness has taken on a prey animal too big for her. And then the male lion comes and uses his heavy body weight to bring the prey to the ground and once it is killed the lioness backs up 
and let the male eat its fill before she eats. But like I said, that's another message. When she is hunting, not only does she hide in the grass, but she always approaches from downwind. Don't want them not only to see her, but don't want them to smell her. So tonight, as I teach my little message, the devil is here, blending in, looking good. But I came to tell you, be sober, be vigilant. That word means watchful because he's trying to catch you riding dirty. Hear me, church of God in Christ. The church must stop being the breeding ground for sin. I ain't getting no help in here tonight. Our young girls should not come to aim and go home pregnant. Our young boys should not come to aim and get turned out. I ain't gonna help you. You don't like my message, but you, you asked me to come. I got to say what the Lord told me to say. We've got to stop preaching to make folks shout. We need to preach a word that will bring conviction. But you need to know tonight the devil wants to spoil you. He wants to mess you up. He wants to ruin your reputation, desecrate and devastate you. Marriages shouldn't get torn up at the AIM convention. And this is where we come for training. This is where we come for teaching and instruction and direction. We didn't come here to fornicate. We didn't come here to creep and to cheat. Satan is here trying to catch you riding dirty. I got to get out of here. I told you I wasn't going to be long. But here, y'all sit down. The folk can't see behind you. Sit down. I ain't going to be long. I told you I'm 63 years old. But Mother Rivers here lately, the Lord put a word in my spirit and I'm not really highly educated like some of you men back here but the Lord told me that in this season of my life that I have to be audacious and I, I had to go look it up and I found out that it means daring and then I found another word synonymous with audacious audacity and then a person that is audacious is someone who has a healthy disregard for conventional thinking. And I come tonight because I got a spirit of audacity on me. And I, 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 I want to say this before I go further. Uh, we got to be equal opportunity preachers. I understand why we cry out against homosexuality. I understand because it is a horrible sin. But let's not get so caught up in preaching against homosexuality that we let the adulterers think they're all right. Let's not get so caught up on homosexuality that we let the fornicators get under the wire. I don't care what anybody says, this is yet a holiness church. And we don't want to get so caught up on one sin that we let the liars... Oh God, help me preach. The Bible said that this... In 1 John, he talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. But then there's a third one that he talks about that I don't hear too many people preach about. And that's the pride of life. And they don't talk about it because it's not visible. But the pride of life is an inside job. And here's what I'm wondering, Evangelist Rogers, all of these anointed folk. You're so anointed that you can tell me my name and tell me what's in my bank account. You're so anointed you can tell me where I live. Well, I'm thinking that anointing ought to be able to tell you about your nasty attitude. That same anointing on you ought to be able to tell you about your ugly spirit. You need to understand the anointing is not licensed for you to act ugly. Walk by folk and not speak. Some of the most anointed folk are some of the most nastiest folk. The devil is trying to catch you. Uh, I get amazed, y'all. You all are rushing me. But I'm amazed. Thank God for my brother, Bishop Shedd. 
Last week when this decision was handed down, I didn't say anything. I didn't post nothing. Why are we so confused and upset when sinners sin? Isn't that what they do? And, and, and the only time I find God upset is when covenant people. The only time God brings judgment is when his people are twerking. When his people, oh God, are dropping it like it's hot. When his people, God, I wish I had some help in here. We're here at the AIM convention. And when the housekeepers come to our rooms, they ought not be throwing liquor bottles and beer cans out of our room. Y'all ain't gonna help me, but I'm almost through. Here we are on Pentecost night. And the thing that really bothers me, Chairman Dillard, is that we make the Holy Ghost or we box him in to only one function. We make the Holy Ghost look like the only thing he comes to do is to make us shout. And I don't read anywhere in John where Jesus talks about the comforter. He doesn't say he's going to come and make you shout. He doesn't even say he's going to come and help you speak in tongues. But he did say he will come and convict. And he will reprove and he will rebuke. And sometimes I stand and I cry because I think about Jesus when he stood out on the city limits of Jerusalem. And he began to weep over Jerusalem. And he tells Jerusalem, you're going to be walled in and people are going to take advantage of you. Why? Because you miss your season of visitation. When you really look at that word visitation, we get our word episcopus, which we get episcopal, which is a ecclesiastical term. What Jesus was saying, and if you know anything, this is the episcopal sitting over here. That word is bishop. What Jesus said, Jerusalem, your bishop came to town. And you didn't even know it. Your bishop came and you didn't recognize that your bishop was in town. And then in the book of Genesis when it says the Holy Ghost covered the earth. That word cover means flutter. And there's only two things that flutter. One, a mother bird flutters. When she has a worm or a mouse or something and she brings it back to her nest and she's about to feed her babies. And so what she does is flutter to see which baby is hungry enough. So when the Holy Ghost comes in our midst, he's not here to make us shout. He's fluttering over us to see who really wants me. Who really wants to... I come to feed you. Who wants it bad enough? I don't even care if you shout. But if I can feed you. And then the second word flutter. Is when a husband. Is getting ready to. Make love to his wife. And he flutters over her. What he's about to do is. Impart seed. So when the Holy Ghost comes in our midst. It's not to make us do this. He wants to put his seed in us. A seed of righteousness. A seed of holiness. A seed of godliness. That will cause us to walk right after the AIM convention is over. Oh, I don't get excited over all of this stuff. Y'all y'all, y'all got the wrong person up here tonight. I don't get excited about all this emotion that goes on. I want to see you when you get back home. I want to see you when you get back to your local assemblies. Oh, God help me in here. Here's our problem. The world is not the problem the church is the problem and then here we love we love tw Deuteronomy 28 we love to read it we love to quote it we like to read all the bless and blesses this and blessing the city and bless coming in and bless going out but we always stop and don't read verse 28 <laughs> when we get through reading about the blessings God says this, but if you walk away from my laws, I will afflict you with madness. What's wrong with us? We've walked away from the laws. 
we walked away from the commandments of God. And that's why laws are being passed in the land because the church is not doing her job. I'm on my way to my seat now. Bishop Porter, you know better than I do what this is. This is the media of my day. This is the tape of me preaching in 1989. It's a VHS. A lot of young folk in here don't even know what a VHS is. And this is what it looks like. I preached when I was the youth president under Bishop Anderson and here's the copy. My mother wanted a copy so I made her a copy. She played it for her sisters and she wanted a copy. So my mother made my aunt a copy. My aunt has an aunt in South Bend, Indiana and she made a copy. And my aunt in South Bend had a sister in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and she made her a copy. But I noticed something started happening, Joyce. The further they got away from the master, it, it, it started getting blurry. It started getting lines in the picture. It was hard to tell who was who. What has happened to the church? We've gotten too far from the master. And we've lost our identity. And if we're going to be the church that God is going to use in this 21st century, we got to get back to the master. I'm going now. I'm going now. I'm going now. You all are waiting on me to do something else, but I'm going now. Because I need to tell you something that happened to me earlier this year. As I said, I live in Michigan. I got real sick, not knowing that I had a bronchial infection. I suffered with sinus, so I just figured I had a sinus infection. And I'm not making this up, Bishop Drew. I took Advil congestive relief. I took Zycom nasal spray. I was using NyQuil and DayQuil. I was using Claritin. I was using Actifed. And then none of this stuff was working and it had gone into three weeks of me being sick. So I went on Amazon.com and I found some medicine that my father used to use. And I ordered some three sixes and some Father John's cough medicine. Had them overnighted to me because I was trying to get better. After three weeks, my, ma my wife said, Mike, you cannot continue like this. So she called my doctor and took me into Dr. Preston. The nurse came in and took my weight and asked, what's wrong with you? I said, I got congestion in my chest. And when I cough, it feels like something is stabbing me in my heart. She asked me, what are you taking? And I read my list. And she stopped writing. She said, that's too much to write on your chart. Dr. Preston came in the office and looked at me and looked at my chart. And said, have you really been taking all of this medication? And I said, yes, sir. He looked at me and said, most people don't understand that the over-the-counter things, they only treat the symptoms, but they don't do nothing for the cause. He said, the cause is mucus, and if we ever get the mucus out, it'll get rid of your cough. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that want to get the mucus out? What's the matter now? Zion, you don't sing like you used to sing. What's the matter now? You don't pray like you used to pray. Oh, oh, Zion.
Come on, let's praise our God for this anointed message. Stand to your feet. Come on, let's celebrate what God has spoken to us tonight from this awesome man of God. No one leaving at this time. It is our desire and it is the direction of our chairman of the International AIM Convention tonight that some lost soul would come to Jesus Christ. We have about 200 altar workers that are coming. And as the choir sings that song real softly, I tried him and I know him. I found him to be a friend. Somebody needs to receive Jesus tonight after such a powerful and prolific message from Bishop Hill. Come on, let's celebrate this powerful word from God that we have received tonight. No one leaving, no one moving, everyone standing at this time after hearing from heaven. There is somebody that does not know Jesus in the pardoning of their sins. Friends, I want you to know tonight that our bishop talked about the message being on a VHS. Tonight, this message has been recorded, DVD, CD, streaming live on the internet. But I want you to know that more importantly, this message that we've heard has been recorded in eternity. And if we die and go into eternity and fail to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God is going to bring us back to this night when we heard from heaven the gospel message. How many know that Jesus is the solution to the adversary, to the lion that is running rampant? Look at someone and tell him Jesus is his name. And many times in this grand old church of God in Christ as they sing real softly we as preachers many times work your nerves touch your neighbor hit your neighbor pinch your neighbor kick your neighbor but I'm going to ask you tonight that you would catch a neighbor powerful by powerful, powerful word on tonight we're it was a powerful word vice chairman go 